In this video, we will discuss three things having to do with inheriting a firearm. First one is whether or not there's a registry. Second, what happens if it's an out-of-state transfer? And the third one has to do with prohibited persons. The first one is, is an easy one. We get this phone call a lot. Hey, um, unfortunately someone passed away. I'm inheriting their firearm. How do I register it in my name? Uh, well, you can't. Um, there's no such thing as a firearm registry, uh, either nationally or, or federally. Um, so when it comes to long guns and firearms, as we call them in Pennsylvania, which are traditional handguns and pistols, uh, there is no registration. There is something called the NFA or the National Firearms Act that has to deal with uh, short barrel rifles, short barrel shotguns, any other weapons, destructive devices. And that's another topic for another day. But when it comes to traditional long guns and, and firearms, meaning traditional handguns and uh, revolvers and pistols in, in Pennsylvania, then uh, there is no registration. So you don't have to worry about it. There's no form that we can give you or anyone can give you. The second has to do with an out-of-state transfer. Now, federal law makes an exception for the inheritance of an out-of-state transfer of a long gun and may be completed without going through an FFL. So in other words, if someone in another state dies and they uh, send you or they want to send you a long gun, meaning a shotgun or a rifle, traditional uh, lengths involved with it, then there is uh, no need to go through an FFL. Now, it gets a little bit more confusing when it comes to handguns. Uh, traditional, what we call handguns, meaning pistols, semi-automatic pistols, and also anything that would fall under the rubric of what we call Pennsylvania firearms or handguns. Um, there are two provisions, 6111 of our Uniform Firearms Act and 60, uh, 6115 of our Firearms Act. Two separate and distinct statutes, and that's where the tension or the confusion relies. It's been our published position uh, on Penlago, our companion um, uh, blog, that when it comes to an out-of-state transfer of a handgun, that it need not go through an FFL. And that's because of 6115 and the, and the, and the provision that we very spe specifically lay out in that blog post, that it falls under that uh, exception that has to do with inheritance or bequest or succession um, and therefore an FFL is, is not needed. However, uh, there is a different uh, school of thought um, that 6111 controls such things. 6111 is our normal provisions that have to do with the transfer of a firearm, meaning a traditional handgun or revolver uh, in, in Pennsylvania that it must go through an FFL. There is tension there. It's not just the opinion of Penn Lago and also us here at the McShane firm that it is not necessary. It's also the opinion of Mike Giarmita and Jonathan Goldstein, who is uh, someone who works closely with the NRA. But there is that tension and that school of thought. We need to make you aware of it. For peace of mind, um, it might make sense to go through an FFL in such a situation. But it is our published position that it, that is not necessary when you're dealing with uh, bequests or secessions. Um, the third thing has to do with what happens when there is a prohibited person who is going to be the intended receiver of a firearm in a will or bequest. And in this case, firearm, I mean long guns, shotguns, um, pistols, anything that basically goes bang. Uh, under the that would be covered by the Uniform Firearms Act. Well, it's really simple. If you're a prohibited person, either through state or federal law, you can't have a firearm. No will or anything that has to do with uh, transfer upon death can overcome your disability to own, possess, or use a firearm. Uh, and, and that's just very simple. And what happens in that case if you're the executor, uh, you cannot knowingly transfer a firearm uh, against the provisions of the Uniform Firearms Act or also under federal law. You can't violate that, obviously, so that prohibited person 
doesn't get the firearms. And then what happens is a matter of course, it would go to the next person that's so named or the residual of the estate as it's called, the, the person who catches everything else, if you will. Uh, so those are the three things that we wanna go over uh, with respect to uh, when it comes to uh, death and inheriting a firearm. There is no registration, out-of-state transfers, there's that tension, and a prohibited person, you can't either receive or you as the executor cannot distribute it. Um, those are guidelines in the law in Pennsylvania.